In the wake of all the political instability in some of Gauteng's top municipalities, one that has evidently stood out is in the city of Johannesburg. Well, my name is Alfara Mushwana, and today we're going to be in conversation with the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Guaman, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, let's start with how it's been in office. You've been there for a little bit over a month. How is it going so far? Thank you very much and a very warm welcome to your viewers. Um, earlier I was informed that I've been in the office for 40 days. So uh, I can safely say that it's been 40 days. However, um, the, the, the bulk of my time has been directed towards my understanding of uh, the operations within um, the entities and departments of the city of Johannesburg and primarily because of what is happening today. Uh, we had to table a budget speech um, and I had only been in office for a month or rather a few weeks when those engagements started. Um, it is a, uh, a budget speech, require, uh, in fact a budget of the city requires me to take ownership of it. Um, the only role that the MMC of Finance has is the delegated uh, responsibility that I give to him before he presents it. But ultimately, it becomes my budget that I will be held accountable for. So it was prudent for me to get a sense and an understanding of the business plans that have been tabled by the various municipal entities within the city so that I can ensure that all 11 strategic priorities of the government of local unity are encompassed in how those business plans were structured. Because I would not want to find myself in a situation where it does not speak to our priorities as a government. So uh, for the most part, um, apart from some of the questions that you might ask about me having felt sick, um, the allergies and the likes, but uh, I've been, in fact, in cumbersome meetings within this particular room that you are sitting in today. Okay, we'll come back to um, the state of the city address uh, and the budget as you were speaking about it. Uh, right about now, I just want to touch on you being elected into office. You, you were brought to office by the backing of the ANC and the EFF. Uh, however, that does not necessarily mean that the residents may have put you there. Um, and I feel like this is a sense that you do need to give the residents confidence that uh, you do know what you're doing. Uh, how can you assure the residents that you do indeed know what you're doing? Hmm. Thank you very much for the question. I think it's very important. And, and I would like to respond to you as best I can in a manner that would ensure that it gives context to the residents in terms of the dynamics that constitute us having to have a coalition government in place more than anything, right? In as much as the residents, as you put it, not me, because I know they put me there, because the majority of council voted for me. Um, every political party goes to an election with an intention to govern. Hence, you find representatives or representatives in council in the form of councillors. Although our numbers are not as uh, significant as the ANC or the Economic Freedom Fighters, but the same way in which they were elected into office is the same way that we have been elected into office. Now, another critical issue that uh, our um, residents need to understand is that council processes are not limited to a political party. It's council processes where our diverse uh, political backgrounds meet and there are different ideologies and um, views on the political landscape and we debate robustly on issues that affect the residents before we can take decisions. So with me represented in council as a councillor from Algema means that I am part of a collective that engages on diverse issues that cover all our residents in the city of Johannesburg and therefore means that the council when it, in, it, it instills in fact or rather uh, demonstrates in, in its confidence in one of our own, then it means that the entire city is rallying behind because political parties have a responsibility to also engage their constituencies that put them there in order for them to qualify the reasons why they have elected a particular individual into a position of power. But how do you assure them, that those residents, that you will do, uh, indeed do your job as the executive mayor of Joburg? <clears throat> so, when you accept the role, to be an executive mayor in the city of Johannesburg. It is not a, a, a prestigious event, right? It is a responsibility that is encompassed with 
uh, a lot of expectations, especially in, 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 in the state in which the city finds itself in. Now, it is not a, a, a unilateral approach towards instilling the confidence in the city of Johannesburg. It's a collective approach because I cannot sit here and say that I represent um, all the constituencies that are in the city of Johannesburg. But for me to have a sense and an understanding of where the constitu uh, constituencies are and what do they prioritize, it's a, it's, a, it's a consultative process from within the coalition and externally. So how I can, or rather, or rather what I can commit to is the fact that I will commit to having the relationships that are needed with the duly elected representatives in council to ensure that all diverse constituencies in the city of Johannesburg are catered for. And for me in particular is to always ensure that I advance a developmental state and I ensure that empowerment and job creation is prioritized. We have an aging infrastructure that has a five-year backlog. And my understanding, or what I see in the city of Johannesburg every time I drive through the streets, is the same thing that each and every resident sees when they drive through the streets. So the concerns that I have are the concerns that the residents in the city of Johannesburg have. And I am willing and have always been willing to work with the city of Johannesburg to ensure that we grow the city together. You spoke about um, <clears throat> the coalition representing the whole city. Yes. Uh, and my question to you is that there are certain role players within that uh, government of local unity that may not be happy with you being in office. Mm. And we saw it in the delays on the day where you were elected, you know, later during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is your sense of that, <laughs> that there are role players that are not happy with the fact that you are in the seat that you are in. I, I, I appreciate your use of words. <laughs> so I'll respond uh, the same way as well. So you need to understand that as political parties, we communicate as a part. Mm. We don't communicate as role players. Mm. So if there are role players or elements within a party position that might have a conflicting view on the collective approach of doing things in the seat, we treat them as such. We treat them as the rogue elements and we, we, we attend to them accordingly. But isn't that same treatment of treating them as rogue elements the same one that got uh, your predecessor, Tabelo Ahmad, to leave office or resign? So, <clears throat> hmm. look, um, how Councillor Ahmad then um, ended up in a situation where he needed to resign? You are correct. It is a collective decision of the coalition. And we need to take each and every political party's concern into consideration when taking a decision as well. Right? So the issues that were raised, although the, we did not fundamentally agree with the fact that Tabelo needed to resign, but on the basis of understanding that it's not about the position itself. However, the fact that we are in government, that will ensure that we ultimately achieve our objectives as a coalition was the decision that we gravitated more towards and not necessarily with the sense of comfort that um, a councillor from Al Jama would emerge, but on the basis that we retain the numbers sufficient enough for us to be able to elect a mayor of our choice. So rogue elements that you might be referring to, um, I, I, do not, I do not think that they were as effective as uh, maybe they are assuming that they were, but it was rather the, the coalition um, having met its first obstacle and challenge and, and as such um, worked through it as a collective without there being conflict that emanated as a result thereof. You're going to be facing a motion of no confidence, possibly, I think, uh, towards the end of this month, which was tabled by the Action SA. And one of the reasons for them uh, tabling this motion against you is, and I quote, the, your failure uh, to address the criminal allegations that were leveled against you. Why don't you feel the need to address them? Um, <laughs> which one must I respond to first? Criminal like, allegations? Criminal. Because I don't know anything about criminal al allegations. There's no charge that I can say that I've been, um, I am being investigated on. That's the first part. The second part is that <clears throat> Action SA and... Hmm, 
with respect, them not having expression in council or in the political landscape, enough for them to be able to represent constituencies effectively, would always want to find something that they can use in order to maintain relevance. Like you, in your introduction, um, until the day I was elected into office, nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew I even existed in council as one of the councillors. However, anything that has Gabelo Kwamanda attached to it becomes a sensation. And I understand why they would jump on a bandwagon yeah. and try to be part of that whole, uh, what do they call it, trending. Yeah, trending issue. But the vote of no confidence would then be for them to table before council and be considered by whoever they are associated with. We, as the government of local unity, have not even engaged on the possibility of there being a motion against the executive mayor, which means we are not taking it as serious as they think they want to take it. And lastly, before my apologies, <laughs> I think I am, I, am, I, am, I am preventing you from saying something, but I'll allow you as soon as I conclude. Um, last but not least, um, Okay, no, let me let you go first. I, 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 go just, I just forgot what I wanted to say to you. All right, then we'll, we'll, we'll move away. Um, you've been very quiet um, ever since you assumed office. Uh, usually the processes are that after a mayor is elected, they will go and brief the media, they will go and speak to the media, but we've never really seen that with you. And uh, one, one, one would argue that th that has contributed to people, councillors, not having confidence in you as a leader. Uh, what, do, what, what should we expect from you? Because we don't know what to expect from you at the moment. Okay, let me just dispel a, a, a notion that is untrue. The, the fact that there are no councillors that have confidence in me is, is, is a misconception. Why? Council has confidence in me. Individuals within political parties that do not agree from opposition in particular um, do not have the confidence because it's their role as opposition to oppose. But there are some in the government of local unity that don't have confidence. Okay. Please uh, tell me who and how many, or rather how many of them. Let me assist you. It, it, we saw that uh, on the day you were elected, um, there were delays. Okay. No, let me go back to that response now before I continue. Sure. Look, um, it, it was understandable mm. that there would have been a delay. Let me, let me be specific. The African National Congress in particular is the biggest uh, political party represented in council, right? And as you would have known from um, November last year, 2022, I think. 22. When we removed Palazzi from office, um, the chairperson regional of the African National Congress ascended to office as executive mayor. And there was no contestation there because we had agreed on the basis that it is a big party. Yes, we agree. The ANC must ascend. But due to the political landscape in which we find ourselves in and the complex nature of um, the diverse, I don't want to say egos, but the diverse um, characters of, of political parties, it does not allow for, for some of the decisions that are ordinarily um, expected to be carried through. There has to be a different approach that would then have to be discussed in order for us to find a collective solution. So it was not on the basis of, it had nothing to do with me, but it had everything to do with the fact that as a big party, this is how things should be. And we understood, and I still understand up to today, um, it, is, it, 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 has not, it has got nothing to do with the fact that they did not have confidence in Councillor Kabalo Kwamanda or anything of that nature. But they were well within their right mm. to take a position as a party because as a party you have to ensure that you support one of your own. And, and I, I supported them in the fact that they didn't take the decision. All right. You've been very um, hesitant when it comes to answering the questions of your academic qualifications. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you've, been, you've, you've clarified um, your academic qualifications to a certain extent. However, residents of Joburg still don't know what, whether you do have any or not. Why have you been uh, hesitant when it comes to answering the question, do you, on, 
or do you not have um, metric or maybe certain ac academic qualifications? Okay. Firstly, I haven't been hesitant in responding to any question, first and foremost. Um, the, I think the issue, or rather the question that you are raising, emanates from uh, a CV that would have been circulated and that you have gathered information from, and therefore you'd like to see clarity. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm coming to your question so that you don't ask a follow-up question. I'm, I've covered you and your residents as best I could. Um, I've never hidden anything from whether council. I don't have a fake certificate from any higher learning institution in the city of Johannesburg. The only thing that I have um, is um, they call it a national senior certificate. No, national. Oh, no, no, no. NIC. NIC, yes. Right. Um, and the reason why I did not continue was on the basis that I needed to focus on other issues. Um, but me focusing on trying to, to build my family meant me working harder than you, uh, the rest of us in order for me to be able to... Um, represent myself as best I could in any environment. Right. Enough for people to have uh, confidence beyond the fact that they needed to understand whether or not you are a Harvard graduate. Because I can, I can be able to, to, to negotiate qualified statements and be able to interact on a level that people will earn my respect until such a time where you have to um, try to compare me to common or rather expected norms of society for you to be able to then make a determination that no this one is not one of our own <clears throat> all right uh, i i watched your 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 state of the city address uh, last week and uh, i also watched the debate where certain parties were feeling like you were a bit vague in what you're going to be doing yes. and from my observation Issues of water and electricity, nothing new has said there. What you pronounce there is something that we've, we've already known. For instance, the Kelvin Power Station contract, we've, we've been knowing about it, and that is one of the key things that you mentioned when it comes to tackling the electricity issue mm -hmm. in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, and some of the things you mentioned were also seen in, in, in Dr. Palazzi's state of the city address on the previous year. Uh, what should we expect from you? Uh, when it comes to these issues of electricity and water, because you, you did not really say anything new uh, during your address. No, I'm glad that you're asking this question. And I think I need to, in fact, uh, pronounce on this. Right? One of the councillors today made reference to the fact that um, City Power is a municipal on, uh, owned entity and probably um, one of a few that exist in local government, of which is correct. And what we've undertaken to do is to implement a, a, an energy mix model, right? That you would assume that Mpopalati came up with, and which is not true. Um, it was, in fact, um, Councillor Moran, uh, the former executive mayor. But we've taken it further in saying that we, as the city of Johannesburg, would like to position city power in a manner that would enable it to supply and to assist um, ESCOM in the supply of electricity in the province because it has the capacity to do so. I am currently in engagements with the provincial government to establish how we can potentially look towards that particular direction because um, the energy crisis is not a crisis for the city of Johannesburg alone. The city of Johannesburg firstly um, and in my first step in achieving that would be to migrate the Soweto customers into city power. And secondly, from that, would then be to capacitate City Power in terms of um, the Kelvin Power Station is not just about the 12% that they contribute to the grid, but it's about the potential that the power station has in order to assist in increasing the percentage of the electricity it supplies to the grid. But why did you not put that in your speech? <laughs> As the government of local unit, right, what I do as executive mayor is what I do as executive mayor. I need to account to them. The engagements that I have as executive mayor on behalf of the city still needs to be ventilated 
on a political level, but on an administrative level based on the energy crisis that exists, we have to act. We have to act and then qualify our reasons on a later stage. It, it cannot be a situation where we need to seek permission in order for us to be able to deliver on our, on our people's expectations. So the reason why is because um, the, 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 the budgetary constraints and the focus that I wanted to achieve for this year's soccer and for this year's budget speech is on the fact that we are working on the, the finances of the city and we are working on strengthening the governance processes of the city. We are working internally as opposed to us um, projecting or promoting programs that are going to be implemented in the future. Although it is in the immediate, in the immediate, I, I cited it slightly in my response to one of the councillors in saying that my immediate priority is to capacitate city power to, uh, to ensure that it plays a critical role as in the energy mitigating strategy. I did not disclose the scope of, the, of, of city power in, in what I've just represented, but I've just highlighted it for information purposes. Because at the end of the day, um, and in my closing remarks, I don't want to appear as if I'm trying to grandstand in any way. What I need to do is what is possible for the residents in the city of Johannesburg and then only pronounce on it when I'm implementing it. The same way that I've been able to earn the respect of councillors in council was not about me coming and speaking English enough for them to have their confidence in me, but it's based on practical outcomes that I've achieved. So, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> before we wrap up, uh, a person like Melinda Masse finds yourself in the office who is known to be a, a, an ANC communicator, one would say. Uh, how does that happen? Um, so, I, I, I was a director in the same office under Jeff Makubo, under Choliti Matomo, and under Mpomo Iran. The very same Lim, Lim Mandela and Masse that you are alluding to was my colleague. For the most part, we had lots of um, outings together, breakfast, lunch. So he, beyond the fact that he was my colleague, but he was someone that we interacted on. Um, we interacted greatly. So coming to an office where I find someone like me, I'm home. Although he comes from a different political party, but our working relationship is, a, is, is, is in such a way that me seeing him, I'm confident that one of the issues that I'll have to deal with is covered, communication. I know that there's a strong individual there that will ensure that this aspect is carried out as effectively as, as it's supposed to. I meet other people, I'm not going to mention the names of my staff compliment in this particular interview, but most of them in the main have been my colleagues and I've worked with them on a level that championed the city in, in, in a very difficult time of COVID. All right. Uh, parting shots. Parting shots. What do you say to those who don't have confidence in you? Um, I am not an, um, what, a motivational speaker. I'm a politician. And in me being a politician, I believe that I, I should be judged based on what I have done or not have done or, or have not done for, this, for the residents in the city of Johannesburg. But um, it's not confidence in me but it's confidence in the collective that have put me in the position in which I'm in. And I, I, I have committed not only to the collective, but to myself to prove everyone otherwise. Because there's an expectation that no, uh, um, no let me not uh, promote the, the, the narratives and the, and the issues that are out there, but right. you may come in. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Well, that was the Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, Councillor Gabriel Guamando. He's only been in office for a little bit over a month. However, he has faced quite a number of hurdles in this time.